I'm here today with Kira and Brett from Solarola. These guys are out on the West Coast. You're up in uh, Oregon, is that right? Ashland, Oregon, yes. Ashland, Oregon. Um, and you guys are, are the ones who made the solar system for our buddies uh, Keegan and Joel on their Route del Sol truck. And I can't wait to start talking to you about that. Um, and then you're also gonna be telling us something about this little, uh, little unit that's sitting behind you here. So I can't wait to hear about that too. All right, next on Now You Know. Um, well, thank you guys for talking with me today. I was really excited to hear from you because um, I was talking to um, uh, Joel, uh, who's out basically riding around in a truck that you kind of made happen, right? Yes. Tell me about this, because he was, I mean, he just couldn't stop singing your praises. So tell me about uh, what what is this uh, invention that you guys made? Well, Joel came to, I think he probably saw some of our VW bus footage somewhere online. And, you know, Joel had been, had a dream to, you know, travel the Pan Am Highway on a solar powered vehicle. And um, so he came to us for, you know, some advice and, and we started talking and it went from a, went from a Ford Transit Connect to this, you know, massive E-Star. I think you mentioned that on your, your little cast there. But uh, yeah, these, uh, these international E-Stars are pretty cool vehicles and um, they were a nice platform for what Joel wanted to do because he wanted to take a cameraman with him. So I'm like, yeah, you could cram in and kill each other in a Ford Transit or, or you could have, you know, a nice spread where you can really take some gear with you. And also just in my experience with the solar electrics, bigger is actually better because you can stuff more batteries in there. You can put more solar panels on there, more structure to hold those panels. And, and so, you know, I talked him into that and, you know, we just dove in, Joel became part of our family and it was, it's kind of how we roll, you know, the trust thing. We just jump in because, you know, there wasn't a lot of money that we made on that project, but, uh, you know, our hearts are full and Joel's out there and that makes it all worthwhile. He's a great guy. And, you know, he's out there promoting us, but also mainly promoting our vision of, you know, people getting out there in these vehicles and just humbling themselves to nature and, and traveling around and, and, and showing that it's viable at this point. So tell me how this works. So Joel had this vision, obviously, that he wanted to, you know, see if he could uh, travel around in this solar powered van. But how did he find out about you? How did he know that you were the right people to come, come to? He um, he saw Dylan Magister's mm. video on us. Um, he did that video like three years ago, back when our bus had lead acid batteries and we we're getting like 30 miles on a charge. And um, so he saw that and then he found us again on Instagram and sent me a message through Instagram. And we got a lot of people sending us messages that are like, hey, I want one. And it just was the kind of thing where he, he was like, I want I want to do this. And um, him and Brett had like two phone conversations and a couple emails and he went and picked him up at the airport in Portland. He lived with us for two months. Our kids like, at, you know, call him Uncle Joel. And um, a bunch of other people kind of just like came out of the woodwork and volunteered time as well. And so it was, it was two months of full on. It was a sprint, yeah. Full on like, oh you know, everyone working, feeding everyone, um, housing everyone. <laughs> But it was, it was pretty, it was, there's just so much energy to do it that we were all just like, all right, this has to be got done. And Joel has to be on that boat in Bellingham to go to Alaska by August. And um, it was still a little bit late. He still hit some pretty <laughs> early snow in Canada and yeah. chose to um, go back to Australia for a couple of months during the cold of winter and just got back on the road. So he's in Washington right now coming down he'll be here pretty soon oh that's right so when when we talked to him he was a lot further north so now he's headed your way and he's gonna obviously yeah. stop by and say hello to you guys again that's that'll yeah. be fun that'll be a nice reunion yeah hopefully we'll be here we have to deliver this uh, vw down to malibu um in a week from friday so we got to take off and hopefully i mean it would be so cool if we could get a few shots of the vehicles oh, together on. but you know we you know paramount is that we deliver this vehicle and and get that done so 
Well, that's cool. So I, I just want to go back to, you know, Joel contacts you and basically you guys just bought in like right away. And, and I can see why yes. meeting, meeting Joel long distance, I, you know, I would do the same. He's just such a great guy. Um, but what I, what I love about this community that we have here at Going is that we are all kind of united by this cause, right? I mean, this mission yeah. to make the world a better place just immediately kind of unites people more than pretty much anything I've ever seen before. Do you guys feel that same way too? Somehow, you know, the word trust keeps coming up for me whenever someone comes, like even this job we did for Redfu, it was full on trust, you know, there was instant connection. I think when people really see what we're doing and potentially what you're doing, it's kind of obvious that, you know, where we are consciously and it makes it easy just to bust through what normally can be, you know, a pretty big brick wall of fear and trust and doubt and just get busy and make this stuff happen. So tell me about what you guys are doing. So like your work, you're just finishing up a new project right now, it sounds like, right? Yeah. So what it, this is a VW minibus, microbus? Yeah, 71, it's a transporter. So we added seven Tesla Model S modules. So you get about, you know, just under 100 miles of range, right around 100 miles of range, depending on how you drive. Um, three kilowatts of solar up top. So there's uh, about a thousand watts of fixed curved um, flexible panels on top, finally got the curve in there. We're starting to make these things more beautiful now. You know, th nice. this wasn't a two month project. It was still quick, but we still we were able to, you know, work a little bit more on aesthetics and, and instead of it overhanging the vehicle, we were, you know, able to tip it in and make it look nice. Maybe we can give you a little tour in a minute. But uh, yeah, so, you know, um, two awnings on each side. So that's in my opinion, what, you know, we had to do for Joel's and what we had to do here for Redfu is to really make the solar viable and since these are RVs, we're not really doing anything out of the ordinary. You know, you want to have an awning potentially on your RV anyway. So yep. you pull the awnings out, now you have three kilowatts. Um, the thing raises up uh, 40 inches, so you can sit up top. You got a six foot bed up top. And also, oh, nice. yeah, and also now you have the ability to track. So you got the ability, there's four electric actuators, so you can tilt your panels for morning sun, tilt them for evening, and get the most out of the sun. That's fantastic! Awesome! It sounds like you guys are improving like leaps and bounds. I mean, not that you're yeah. not the not that the first project wasn't great, but like these are some obvious improvements. That's really awesome yeah. to hear. Yeah. So this vehicle is for Redfu. Um, okay. He's a singer out of Malibu. He was in a band LMFAO. They sang "I'm Sexy and I Know It" and "Party Rock." Yeah. Um, so that's. That's what this vehicle was commissioned by Red Food to do. That's awesome. How did he hear, hear about you guys just through Instagram and word of mouth? I think so. I, I, I've never met him in person yet. Um, I keep meaning to ask him that and trying to figure out what avenues of social media are working best. I think that um, the video that Dylan did on us got it's got almost a million views and I think a lot of people have found us through that but we're also on Instagram Facebook you know website um, we were in home power magazine a couple years ago and that kind of it helped helped in tons of different little small online articles picked us up and like tree hugger and stuff so i feel like when you drop off the vehicle you'll you'll have to give him the full tour right so that'll be your your excuse to meet him right yeah we're gonna oh, yeah. yeah we're gonna be staying with them for a couple days and oh, like really fantastic. showing them um every yeah every it's, little detail. it's a ship it's a ship you know i mean it has it has life support systems it has you know a lot of modular stuff. I like the modular stuff because you can keep the vehicle small and agile and keep your weight down, keep your range up. But so everything, you know, the tables pop up and the top pops up and the awnings pop out. So it, it, it's the idea is kind of it's a it's a rolling tiny home that, you know, opens up into the space and and the roof and, and that. So it'll be it'll be fun to show them. But yeah, we're gonna need a couple days just to spend time, you know, getting them familiar with all the systems. That sounds really cool. So now if viewers are watching right now and they're starting to get excited like I am and they're like, okay, I got to do this. Um, tell me, like, how does the process work? Um, they, they, they call you up and they just start a conversation? We'll, we'll give you our account number right now. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. money, the money is, is there. <laughs> Let's go. We're looking, just like you said, for those individuals that we say, yeah, them, you know, because they have the trust. If they're, if they're doing it, to, you know, for the wrong reasons, which, you know, everybody's got their own thing, but we want people that really understand that this is an opportunity to really travel silently, efficiently um, through nature, and that you can really, if you 
want to put awareness and consciousness into your energy, you can do well. You can get up there with, with gasoline performance. You just have to change a few things. You have to, uh, and, and those things that you're changing have to do with paying attention to nature. And I really want to instill that in anyone that, you know, comes on board or wants a vehicle. And I mean, you know, it'd be hard to pass up work here and there, but really we're going to hold out and suffer however we need to, to make sure that when we put our heart and soul into building these vehicles, it goes out there to the right people. So they'll have to be kind of that, that established first with, with uh, potential customers, yeah. Because I know that uh, you know early on and right now, a lot of people are converting EVs for one big reason, speed, right? I mean, there's a lot of people who own Porsches, for example, and you know right. if they've got a Porsche, they have it for one reason only, pretty much, it's off the line right. speed. And so converting it to you know adding a, a Tesla motor or something makes a lot of sense. But it sounds like what you guys are talking about is not for that market. You, you guys are talking about for uh, taking a camper and going with the family and enjoying a, yes. you know, a what? Like you might even say it's the opposite of that market. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean our vehicles are they're full on campers. So a little bit more the the van life kind of crew. Um, someone that wants to be able to be in nature to get out there with their families or by themselves. Um, so I mean all of the vehicles that we've done have a bed, they have a stove, they have water systems, you know, it's it's an RV. It's about slowing down, you know, we want to give people an opportunity to slow down. I mean, you have absolutely everything you need except food. So you have a refrigerator, you have a place to cook it, you have heat, you know, you have an opportunity with all this energy to cool. Um, so the only thing you need is to pick up some local produce or whatever you desire. And you can really be free. And personally, you know, freedom to me is the ability to, you know, have your time and slow down and, and enjoy your children or your, your uh, you know, your, your spouse or yourself even, just, you know, slow down a little bit. You know, life is really spinning fast, I believe. And it's one thing I had to do personally to, you know, find more fulfillment in life is slow down, you know. That sounds good, actually. <laughs> that sounds really good. <laughs> yeah, we, we've been going pretty, pretty fast lately. <laughs> but, um, you know, we use our, our original VW that we did, our 73, um, it's our daily driver, so we drop the kids off at school, we get groceries, we go to the hardware store 10 times a day in it. Um, so it is a camper, but it's a small enough vehicle that it's you know easy to drive around town too. So if, if someone's just starting to think about this now and they're like, well, you know, I, I love to, to do RVing or camping anyway, what is the difference they're going to experience when they when they go solar when they go electric? Well, you're going to have to pay attention to the sun. I mean, if we do have a 10 kilowatt onboard charger, so if you should desire, in fact, I designed it mainly to take advantage of a 50 amp um, plug at a at an RV park. So RV park, three four hours, you're full. Put the panels out, you're under that. You know, maybe maybe under three hours even if you have a good sunny day and you're charging, you know, 10 to two whatever. But uh, yeah, that's the idea is, you know, you can, you can supplement with plugging in, but it gives you an opportunity to see how resourceful you can be and how much of the sun you can roll on because that will define your path and, and how you travel and giving up a little bit of that control and, and letting the sun dictate how you travel, it opens up a lot of beautiful serendipity that, you know, we don't always choose that, but sometimes when we give up control, we tend to go places we wouldn't have normally gone, and that's what this vehicle does for you. It opens up, in my opinion, a whole new path. So basically, if you're a family, let's say, you know, you've got a couple kids, and I mean, it sounds like a great way to kind of get them in touch with how the world and the planet works, right? I mean, we're going on a trip yeah. today, kids, and we have to be mindful of the sun where we park, and like, I think that sounds great. Um, but is there any fear? Is there anything that like families should be like, oh, but I, you know, normally I gas up before the trip, now I won't be able to. Is there anything that, they should worry about. Well, I guess that's why I mentioned the 10 kilowatt charger because okay. you can, um, you know, we have a Tesla um, destination charger adapter too. So there you're pulling, I think 45 or 48 amps anyway. So you're basically, you know, as capable as any EV as far as getting charged if you should need it. If it's a, oh my God, I'm used to having gas and I need to get here kind of situation. Um, you can still do that. You can, you can arrange your trip around those things and maybe just, you know, charge on solar for fun at first until you really get comfortable with it so that there's not fear and doubt and then get to the point where hey guess what you know you can run out of gas and you can't just you know 
put put something up in the sky and pull gasoline. It's actually safer in some ways. Um, energy and you know communicate powering communications and whatnot. Um, you always have that. Even in the clouds with three kilowatts, you're you're pulling plenty to to keep yourself warm if you need to, cool, whatever. So yeah, I mean it's different. And whenever there's difference and unknown, there can be fear and doubt. But that's also how we grow as we face those things. So it is. It can be challenging you know, with all of that, but it also offers that opportunity for growth, especially for kids. I mean, because they're brilliant, you know, they're coming in without a lot of the conditioning that we have. They're going to be the ones that are really going to bring the ideas with these things, the new apps and the new ways to, you know, charge and figure out how to origami, get more panels up there. And, and, you know, it's exciting for them and it's simpler for them. You know, a battery and a solar panel, I think is a lot more accessible than a gasoline motor and valve train and, and timing belts and it's it's simpler i mean everybody has a phone they already know how a battery system and a charging system works you know so i think it's accessible for people so that reduces fear sometimes in a way now you mentioned that the system behind you that you just put in or um has about 100 miles of range is it possible that if a family wanted more range that they could pay more and put more batteries in yeah absolutely i mean i wouldn't go more than 200 miles just because of the weight but for example, I have lithium iron phosphates in my bus, which are a little heavier than the Tesla modules. They're actually about twice the weight, and it's been fine. In other words, it can handle it. So I could put the full 85 kilowatt hour pack in here. I would do, definitely do some reinforcing. I'd probably at that point pull the body off and do some reinforcing. And then I would be able to sling them nice and low for even better ballast. But uh, definitely, I asked Red Foo if he wanted 200 miles. We did talk about it a little bit, but he opted, no, let's just for now. So I made it so I could possibly even add a pack, so. If you have a vehicle like the E-Star, um, like Joel's, and we have one that we're gonna start building here pretty soon, um, that larger vehicle has the capacity to hold more batteries, more weight, so more range. Like um, Joel's like more up around 200 miles with both of his battery packs. How hard was it to learn how to do this? Like, um, it, it, was it a learning process where like the first project took forever and now you know how to do it? Or is it, you know, how does it work? Um, you know, it takes a lot of patience and um, it, you know, I, I've had a wrench in my hand since I was six years old and, you know, I did engineering degrees and blah, blah, blah. And, but, you know, it's like, it's like that whole joy and tinkering and playing with electricity and you know I've invented different kinds of motors and patented different kinds of motors and so you know I've definitely done my time with it but like I said it's I think it is an accessible science a lot of this you know and people are really I think learning more about battery systems instead of just like gas cars just getting in and driving they kind of want to know a little bit more about how it works and and like and they do have that you know kind of knowledge already to some degree but yeah, it, it takes it takes time. I mean, you know, I did off-grid electricity for years, so I became really familiar with solar panels and batteries and how to get the most, and it was always for people who had no money, so I always had to make it efficient and make sure the batteries didn't die. And, and you know, so, you know, definitely a passion there, that freedom passion, because, you know, wherever we worked and wherever we lived, we were able to be way out in the middle of the forest and beautiful places and still have refrigeration and a washing machine and you know, all those, all those comforts. Uh, creature comforts. That's cool. Now, if a family is thinking about doing this right now and they're trying to think about like, what kind of budget is he talking about? Can you give me some range, some ballpark that people can be thinking about? Like on the low side, it would be this and on the higher side that? Well, I don't think, I, I don't think we'd really want to do much less than a hundred miles. And it is the batteries because they're pretty much the most expensive part. So that's going to define budget and cost and all that. And so I wouldn't really want to go less than 100 miles of range. So basically, I wouldn't want to do a lot less than this vehicle here because mm -hmm. if I do, I may miss what I really want to accomplish and that's create the, the ride and the vehicle that promotes the consciousness. So yep. um, this vehicle here for Red Foo, I think it was over 50 grand in parts. 60. So over, over, over 50 in parts, you know, we could, we'll whittle away on that, you know, as we refine and streamline the process. But uh, you know, having a good solid donor vehicle is really important because I don't want to restore the thing. I don't want to deal with rust. And, and I do right. love these VWs. They're lightweight. They're perfect for holding the solar as far as their you know, surface area on top. And they have that iconic feel. It matches. you know. 
and so we'll probably stick with them. So you're looking at you know a good fifteen for the for a solid bus. We paid twelve for this one. Could have been better in, in certain areas, but was pretty cool. The nice thing is we can buy transporters, which are cheaper than Westfalia's because we essentially make them campers. So now we're you know you're up around what fifteen seventy five right around there, and that's of course no labor. The labor thing is probably what's going to change the most as we're able to you know just send CAD files out instead of you know whittle out, whittle this out of aluminum like we did on this build. So that price is going to drop, but you know for it's basically Kira and I building. She totally carried me this build by you know spearheading all of the interior. She did the fold out seat and all the mechanics there, fold up tables. She does the counters, the floor, the canvas uh, enclosure, and everything that makes it pretty. I make it work. But um, so you know it's two people. It takes us about six months. So I think uh, right around you know if we were able to clear, we, we're basically looking at survival here. We're not. We're not, you know, putting tons of money in the bank. We're basically, if we can do this for people and survive, we're happy. So that puts us right around 50. So we're thinking about between a 120 and 150, like right in there, and then trying to streamline that down as much as possible through the uh, oncoming years. And somewhat dependent on what people, you know, people's needs and what the shape of the vehicle is in and all of that yeah. as well. All right, well, I need to see it. So if you don't mind grabbing the camera and showing me, I, I, I want to show our viewers what you guys have done. This is really exciting. What needs to go on the back of one of these, especially our larger vehicles, we wanted to send one with Joel, but we didn't have it finished, was our solar-powered scooters. What? Yeah. So this is my little baby. This is my toy. It's got a 100-watt curved panel on the front, and it's got two hub motors on the back. So it's really fast, probably very, very likely too fast, but it's really fun when I got to go to the hardware, as Kira mentioned, like 10 times a day. And uh, so that's going to have to go with the vehicle, because if you can imagine, you put out your wings to charge, and you might want to do a little reconnaissance around town, get some groceries. Oh my God, yes. Whatever, oh my so. God, that is amazing. What You made that? Yeah, fully, like I say, knotted out of aluminum, but it's got 2,500 watt hours of uh, lithium cobalts in it, and... Like I said, the, the double hub motors, it's so much fun. Oh my God. So let's take a look at the bus. So anyway, take a look inside here at Kira's beautiful interior. This is uh, her expertise here. And so this, uh, this seat here will fold out into a bed. The seven Model S modules are right underneath there. They basically don't take up any more space than the normal um, volume under that back seat. So pretty clean there. It, Hides pretty well. Got your big disconnect switch uh, should you need that, or just for storage mainly. But you got a single burner um, cooktop, infrared cooktop, and a water system, which is pretty basic. You got two jugs. You got a clean and a dirty, so you go seven gallons at a time, which will last you longer than you think. We're not really showering necessarily or doing things like that um, yet. But uh, take a quick look in the front. So we just do a real simple little touch screen to keep an eye on batteries and, and range. And I like to have my 12 volt uh, um, visible too so I can really see what I've got running and know exactly what's drawing. We put a power steering, electric power steering in it, which makes it really easy to drive. So you can just, you know, palm the steering wheel, one finger it, pretty nice. A little refrigerator in the middle there just for the basics. Yeah, and then if you look up top, you can see, so the last thing we have to do before we deliver this vehicle is get the canvas on. You can see there's four actuators that raise it up about 40 inches. So, wow, yeah. wait a minute. So I'm just trying to wrap my head around this. So uh, it's in the up position now, but that yeah. comes down when you're driving. Yeah, you, you drop it down and it seats real nice on top there. And, and it's a lot more aerodynamic, as I said, than, than my rig which is a little chunky, but gets the job done. <laughs> that is awesome. And can, can you hop in there so we can see you in, in there, yeah. like with it up? Yeah. So you, need, so you need to have, you know, the ability to stand up in your kitchen, right? So that's really nice about, you can remove. Oh, man. If you want, you can remove all these, uh, these leaves here. These will remove if you want to have it all open. I like, to wow. take, I like to take this one out so you can really have lots of elbow room in the kitchen. So you can see those slots up there. That's where the side panels go. So then you'll pull out like there's a drawer here, a drawer there, and then on the opposite side also the length. So they pull out about 50 inches. 
So you have a nice awning on each side. There's the brake pump, which I haven't enclosed yet in rubber, so it's quieter. But of course, we have to have a, a electric uh, vacuum pump for our brakes. So you have power brakes. It's kind of nice. And, and you said that this is 3K roughly of, of solar. Yeah. So th there's uh, there's 12 245s. So there's four on top, and then uh, each one that pulls out is two, and there's uh, four of those. And those those are numbers that I'm not throwing out there. Those are numbers that we've come up with from Joel's vehicle, from our vehicle. So it's it's a reality, and that's that's my goal. I don't even really even want any more than that, because then it's like, right. you don't even have to think about it. But yeah, 100 miles, and it's, the funny thing is, even as the vehicles tend to grow in size and weight, it still hovers around that 100 miles, you'll pull about 100 miles, based on having a little more surface area, and you know, capable capability for batteries and such. This is so impressive. I, I just want to ask you, like most shops can handle one type of thing. You know, you think of a transmission shop or a, a wheel oh, shop, yeah, right? and like you're doing everything to these vehicles inside and out. Yeah, with my wife. <laughs> that's the hardest part. <laughs> but uh, that's it is it is truly a mom and pop. What can I say? I still have to box this motor in. It's kind of dark, huh? No, I can see it. Can you see it? Yeah. Yeah, that's great. That's good. So Yeah, so what kind of motor is it? So this is uh, Netgain, just came out with this motor. It's a switch reluctance motor. This thing is 94% efficient. So you're converting your electricity to mechanical 94%. Like my motor in my van right now is, is doing about 88%, which is still respectable, but you're talking free range just because of the efficiency. So it's a permanent magnet switch reluctance motor. I believe that's what they went to also in the in the newer Tesla models. Yeah, that's yeah, exactly. The Model 3 has the same efficiency. That's great. So this just bolts right up to the transaxle. I mean, I put a aluminum clutch in there just to reduce some of the um, spinning weight a little bit and we'll see how that feels. Got that through EV West. I've had a lot of uh, help from Michael Bream at EV West. He's a really great guy. A really he is, super yeah, he's advocate. A great guy. Yeah, so he's I'm emailing him quite a bit and he always gets back to me and he's been really supportive of our project, so I really appreciate him. There's our cool our cooling there. That that whole area gets blocked off by an aluminum panel. This area over on this left side also gets blocked off. That's the heater and the backup uh, backup signal. We got three um, three kilowatt chargers, Thunderstruck Motors, also a great organization, good people there, always backing me up, wonderful guys. Um, so, you know, right around 10 kilowatts, so you can pull that 50 amps out of your campground. That's about it. So this is the other part of the bed, so one of the beds that when the seat folds down, um, this comes out into the bed. Wow, so as you mentioned, this sleeps four. Yes. So yeah. two up top, two on the bottom. It's per that's it's perfect for a little family. I mean, that's obviously we're a family of four and so it's hard not to design it for, you know, yourself in a way. <laughs> so I mean how many projects can you guys take on? Like it sounds like it's it's you know, it's a work of love first of all, so it's it's not like yeah. it's it's not like a factory here. So like yeah, how many of these projects could you do in a year? We, we really want to grow. We just want to make, make sure that we build on a really solid foundation. So, you know, it, for me, it, it's been um, typically difficult to farm out things because nothing's ever done right, of course. And I like to have control over things so that it's safe and it's perfect and it's beautiful. But there's going to be a point where we have to let go a little bit so that more people can have these. And, you know, I'm, I'm happy with growing. I'd love a bigger shop. You know that's part of the plan. We're gonna we're gonna when this goes out, we're pulling in my E-Star, which is gonna take up most of this shop. Mm -hmm. And so you know we're looking for some pre-orders so we can we can we can grow and streamline the process. You know because we've got this we've got this VW now to the point where it's like okay that's it. Aside from maybe making the option for 200 miles of range, I don't really think it needs to change all that much. Which means mm -hmm. that I can just keep refining it and then start to get them out fast. I think I could do a, I think I could do two in three months has been the figure that I keep looking at. So in a year, you know, maybe six in a year. Once you do one of something, you know, and this is actually our second, it starts to get a lot easier and it gets cheaper, the whole drill. And, 
and that's that's our plan so if people want these and and put forth you know their energy we're going to give it back to them as fast and as you know as many as we can that's awesome. Next time we go out west, I definitely want to stop by and meet you guys in person because uh, you guys are really inspirational. Um, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to show us this. And I can't wait to see some footage from when you drive it down south and uh, bring it to Malibu. That'll be so fun. Great. Yeah, thanks. It's great to meet you. Yeah. I think there's some kindred spirit stuff going on here. Thanks so much for watching Now You Know. We work hard to bring you videos about things that we think you'll find useful, but we need to know from you what you want to see, so leave your comments below. Also, don't forget to go over to our Patreon page, where for as little as a buck a month, you can watch our Patreon bonus story every week on Tesla Time News. Thanks again. We'll see you soon.